What's up, my friends? I had a tweet that I shared to uh, Instagram. It, sh- it got shared a lot, and I want to read it to you. It says, how to help someone heal if you didn't hurt them directly. One, acknowledge their pain. Two, give them a safe space to feel heard, to share. Three, listen and use empathy through alignment. Four, if you did hurt them directly, apologize and change behavior. Five, do not gaslight them. To give you context, the reason why uh, I wrote that tweet is because when I look at um, the state of affairs currently in my country here in America, I felt like that those words needed to be put together. First, first and foremost, those words alone with no context, uh, they hold the power to heal just about any relationship with literally no context. If you were to keep those five things in your head, you can heal all the relationships, parent, child, um, brother, sister, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, acknowledge their pain, give them space to feel heard, listen and use empathy through alignment. And if you did hurt them, apologize and change behavior. And then lastly, do not gaslight them. So real quick, when I say do not gaslight them, gaslighting uh, is a psychological term. And basically what it is, is you're dismissing what a person is saying and you're basically trying to make them feel crazy or you're trying to make them feel like they like what they're saying is not valid um, by the dismissal of, of what they're saying. Um, and I see that a lot, especially with race relations going on currently. I see that a lot. You bring something up and you may be bringing up a personal situation. You may be bringing up something you went through, uh, something that is true to your genuine path. And then you have, I call it the data crowd. (laughs) You have the data crowd and they say, oh, well, show me the facts. So I'm telling you a personal story, something that I personally saw or something that I personally feel or think. And you're saying, show me the statistics to my feelings. Those people don't have empathy, which is another thing I'm talking about. They don't have, they're not empathetic. They're not, see, they're not emotionally aware enough. They don't have enough emotional capacity to even understand that maybe at some point in the conversation, the statistics could come up. But if you're just sharing what you think or how you feel, we don't need statistics. All we need is what I said at the beginning, to acknowledge your pain, to give them space to feel heard, to share. To give you space to feel heard or to share, I studied communications in college. So if you studied communications, you've heard this term. It's called active listening. The way that works in a communication model, active listening is there's two people typically in the communication model. You have a sender. So if I if I am talking right now, I am the sender. What I'm sending out is a message. So I'm a sender. It's a it's literally a circle. Communication is a circle. So I'm going to demonstrate that right now. So I'm a sender. I'm sending out a message. Okay. The message goes to you. You are called the receiver. As a receiver, you do a process called encoding. Encoding. You encode the message, which means you essentially it means you judge the message. You look at the message. You judge the message. You feel the message. You think about the message, right? And then through your encoding process, then you become the sender. And then as the sender of the message. When that message comes back to me, that is called feedback. So it's a circle. So look, sender, message, receiver, encoding, message comes back, feedback. Active listening happens when you are receiving a message. And if you use active listening, which means you're actually listening, like you're active, you're you're just as willing to talk, you're just as willing to listen. So you're actively listening to things that people say, Uh, think, feel, maybe even listening to the spaces and and hearing uh, the things they don't say, the things they don't mention, which is something that I personally try to do, which I think has actually helped my uh, my personal life and professional career because you're listening to the, the things that people leave out. When you actively listen, you give yourself the totality of the conversation by taking at face value what they say, but also you become aware enough to hear what they're not saying. And then When you do that, you're giving them a safe space to feel. Three, the way listening is set up, if you listen, you instantly create empathy through listening. You instantly create empathy through listening. You And when you create empathy, you create alignment. So alignment, what do I mean when I say alignment? Here's what I mean. So I used to work in sales. In sales, one of the things you have to do is you have to align with your customer. The reason you want to align with your customer is because you don't want your customer to think they are buying from 
like an opponent. You, they want to see the salesperson as their friend, not as a salesperson. Alignment, the way that works, keep in mind, sales is psychology. So if you're good at sales, you just know psychology. That's all it means. And so alignment, basically the way that will work is, let's say I'm selling you a car or a truck or something, right? I'm selling you a truck. Now I'm mentioning a truck because I want to get a truck. I want to get a, uh, I want to get a Dodge Ram, a uh, Ram. So Ram 1500. That's what I want to get. So let's just say I go into the dealership. Me, I want to spend. Let's say I'm willing to spend thirty thousand dollars, okay, on the Ram. But the Ram I want is thirty five thousand dollars. So the guy, the salesperson or girl, the guy or girl, the salesperson, after conversation, I express them look. My limit is $30,000 for this round. They can't go, it's listed at 35,000, but they wanna make money off, the, off the, the purchase of this vehicle. So he, already, he or she already knows, they can't go under 32,000, but I wanna spend that 30. And I'm, I'm one of these people where I'm like, man, look, if I don't get it at 30, I'm out. He or she is one of those people where it's like, uh, if, I, if, if I go past 32, I'm not getting my commission. Now look, I don't know how the, the back end of the car industry is set up, so I'm just making this up, right? So what he ha he or she has to do, they need to align with me. And the way that would sound is, I understand, trust me. I, I've been there, I've been in your shoes, I've been in your, your position. I deal with customers every single day who are in this position. And all I can do is try my best to work with you. I understand you don't wanna spend more than 30,000. I 100% understand, uh, I'll do everything in my power to see what we can do, to see where we can meet you. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I 100% can get 30,000. I might not be able to, but I'm gonna try. I'll show you whatever data I have to show you where I can get it to. I can try to get my manager over here. I can try to get the finance person over here. Uh, and it's not to play games with you. It's not to waste your time. It's to show you what we can do. Now, look, I know you're not stupid. The car is listed at 35,000. I, I know that you know we can come down from there. So I'll figure out what we can do right now. I'm not gonna waste your time. I'm gonna try to get this as close to 30,000 as possible. But I just wanna create a fair expectation. It might not happen. I'll be back. I'm gonna collaborate with whoever. So essentially, that was just a little role play. So even right there in that situation, you can see where two people can have opposing things, but they can still come together. Like we can still meet and you do that through listening and alignment. So lastly, the last thing I said in there was if you did hurt them, apologize and change behavior. There it is. I don't have to explain that. That, that one is cut and dry. You know, if you hurt someone, acknowledge it, acknowledge it, apologize. Man, my bad. We do it all the time in sports. Oh, my bad, bad pass with our teammates. Bad pass, my bad. I struck out, man. Let me, I got to get on base and I'm tripping. I got to get on base. Like we do it in sports all the time. You know, let's bring that into our relationships. You know, let's bring that into our friendships. Let's get our ego out of these things. You know, it doesn't matter if you're the manager and I'm the employee. We all make mistakes. You're the manager. You're definitely going to make mistakes. You're the leader of the company. You're definitely going to make mistakes. Uh, so let's get to a point where we free our energy and we learn from each other. Much love.